Okay, good day guys, good day to you all. Welcome back to the Formula Sports channel. Thanks for being here. So guys, you know we're always stumbling across interesting information on the internet, right? And you know, it's not, it's not something new to us, but it's still something that we have to talk about, right? And that is an Andre Gray interview that he just did with the athletic out of the uk right and you guys all know that the athletic is a big and credible platform the interview was done with needham on hua hopefully i i got that pronunciation right he is also an individual that i see on espn as well so he works for the athletic and he also does work with ESPN as well, right? It's a very interesting article, right? Very, very interesting article. And it is an, an issue that we have heard about on many occasions, but we still need to talk about it, right? The most important quote, and I soon get to the article, just one sec, but the most important quote from the article is, if England calls, there are no arguments. But if it's Jamaica, it's an inconvenience. Let's get that. That's the most important part, our quote in the article. But let's get to the article a bit. He speaks about a number of things in this interview. Black history, black culture, you know, um, basically what it's like to be black in England, right? Um, also, he speaks about um, his you know, representation of Jamaica and the switch to Jamaica, right? And of course, you know, that is going to be the main focus of this video, right? Um, In the interview, he said, declaring for Jamaica was a five-year process sparked by a conversation with former Watford defender Adrian Mariapa about the practicalities of playing for a country that makes up a key part of Gray's identity. It meant proving he was eligible for a Jamaican passport through his grandparents who came to the UK as a part of the Windrush generation and played a key part in his upbringing. All right, two major points to, to, to highlight right here. For starters, you see how important it is to treat our UK born players and treat them well, right? You see what the art gray is saying in the article, Adrian Mariapa, the, the process was sparked by a conversation with Adrian Mariapa, right? When these players come to represent Jamaica, they are not only bringing themselves, they are bringing their counterparts in the UK to play with them as well. It's important that we treat them well, right? Treat Naira Nasworthy well so that when his cousin Ethan Pinnock asks about what it's like to play for Jamaica years later, he has a positive take on it. Treat Maria Powell so when he uh, when when Andre Gray asks his friend what it's like to play for Jamaica, he has good things to say about it. And also, another thing that stands out to me: why is it taking five years? Why is it taking five years? for a player to sort the situation out. And we heard, we heard Andre Gray speak on this before, you know, where he spoke about it just being a very, very lengthy process, right? So we need to cut out that man. We can't be taking half a player's career to get them involved in the national setup. But it can't be that we're taking literally almost half a player's career Five years after the player shows an interest, five years later, the player turns up. That's ridiculous. That's almost half his career. That's a significant, at the very least, it's a third of his career. That's ridiculous to me, man. Come on, man. We need to do better than that. Right? We need to do better than that. Right? Five years is just crazy. It's way too long. We saw how long it took with Anthony Grant when a private individual by the name of Cataract sorted out his documents. How it took a matter of weeks for Grant 
but it's taking a matter of, of years, five years, half a decade with gray. I know that there will be complications that will arise, like, you know, spelling errors and all of that sort of stuff. But nobody can convince me that it, it, it takes so long to sort out something like that, even with complications arising. That's ridiculous. Well, if you look at the process, we must can cut it down, right? So that's, so that's part of the interview right there. Anyone who knows Wolverhampton knows there's a massive Jamaican community there. I've grown up around it. So I wasn't nervous about playing for Jamaica. It was like being at home. I don't understand how other players feel who maybe haven't had my upbringing and been around it as much. I was happy to be there and to be around the culture. We saw Andre Gray post one of the games blasting a, a, a vibes cartel, right? So we can tell he's fully much, he's fully much rather, you know, engrossed in the culture, so to speak, right? It is a massive welcome. I don't think people would have expected that. The fans were more excited than anything to get English-based players that can come and help try to succeed and get the get and get to the World Cup. So basically, Gray is saying that he felt the love from the fans. Apparently, he didn't hear about the naysayers, so that's good. There is beauty in the struggle and going somewhere where you're not getting your arse. <laughs> you guys know what that is. Wiped for you. It's not all pretty and pretty pitches all the time. But the heart and the culture in it, there's beauty in it. Right, so Gray seems very happy about representing Jamaica, right? Another thing I want to talk about quickly, and this is the most important part of this particular video, right? This is the part that, that is, is, you know, caught my attention specifically. We need to show respect because we're playing no, hold on. Let, let me read before that. Right? Let me get to, get to it before that. Right? There is also, he feels, a discrepancy between the way that some clubs feel towards call-up from certain nations, which can lead to a head versus heart battle for players. We need to show respect because we're playing for a country that is close to us and it's not a light decision to take. Right? He continued, if England calls, there's going to be no arguments. The minute you get a call up for Nigeria or Jamaica, it's an inconvenience and a risk to the club. It's just a stereotype around it. It's the same for, it's the same with the Afghan, African Cup of Nations, which is scheduled to start in January. That has more respect around it now because of people like Egypt, International, Mohammed, Salah, right? Before you'd see clubs not wanting players to go to the Afghan, there are situations now where clubs are asking players to go to a certain amount of games and there is no respect to it. It baffles me, right? Quickly before I, I, I get to, you know, what are, you know, Basically, I'm talking about it. He says, going away, I just want to highlight this part, very important as well. Going away with Jamaica means Gray, leaving his young family with young kids for up to two weeks at a time, which is a considerable commitment personally and professionally, but it is a vital chance to connect with his roots, which has been an important part of his growth in the last decade. So guys, there you go. Andre Gray speaking about the struggle, right, to represent the nation, right? Um, you know, honestly, I am wondering if there, there is something that nations can do about this sort of foolishness, right, in terms of this sort of discrimination that countries like Jamaica face. Can respective federations around the world do something about it? If they can, they should. Because this is absolute foolishness. Remember with Mikel Antonio and David Moyes, for instance, David Moyes, it almost seemed as if he was trying to convince Mikel Antonio 
not to sign up to play for Jamaica, right? Hold out for England, right? Why are these people in trying to interfere with the player's right given to him, afforded to him by FIFA to represent the country of their, their, their choosing, right? I mean, ones that they're eligible to play for, right? If JFF and other countries can do something about this, make some sort of a representation to FIFA, they need to do it, right? We heard the, 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 the interview that um, Crystal of Talawa TV would have done with Grant, right? Ex-reggae boy Grant, Joel Grant, right? Where we just spoke about the discrimination that he faced when wanting to represent his country, right? And how much pressure, right, players were under, right? And how, how basically the discrimination faced. Right, basically the, the 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 bad treatment, so to speak, of players like himself who wanted to come and represent his country. Right? I mean it, it, it needs to stop, man. It honestly, honestly needs to stop. Clubs need to realize, look, whether they like it or not, they cannot do anything about it. They have to release these players barring like injury, for instance. Apart from, like, a, a, for example, an injury, they have to replace, um, release the players for international duty, right? Why the discrimination? Why trying to lobby the player to do otherwise? And all of that sort of stuff, right? Grace spoke about it, head versus heart, right? I get where the clubs are coming from, but they need, look, you're not happy about it, fine. Right, but it is the player's right under FIFA rules to represent a country that they are eligible to play for, and these clubs need to respect that. So, guys, that's my two cents. Take care, stay safe, and until next time.